and still talking, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. This is the embarrassing part. Hello, everybody. How are you? Uh, this is Alex Bennett, and this is a ramble. It goes on until, um, let's see, uh, 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 midnight uh, in the on the East Coast. Wait a minute. Let me turn the light on. There we go. Now we're officially on the air. See that? Uh, there you go. There you go. It's impressive. Uh, what it is, it is impressive, isn't it? That voice that you hear off on the side, I'll, I'll try and give him a, 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 a face here. Hold on a second. I'm trying to remember which one of these was the, um, was camera B. There we go. There's camera B, and there is our old friend uh, from, uh, I guess, uh, where are you from now? Where do we say you're from? Cleveland, Ohio? Oh, God. Uh, Shaker Heights, Ohio. But it's a weird, it's a weird vanity that people who kind of turn a little bit that way, so you're kind of looking at the yeah. It's yeah. a weird vanity. Yeah. That people who live in a suburb of Cleveland, mm -hmm. s who never go to Cleveland, say they live in Cleveland. Yeah. Now I grew up in Maplewood, New Jersey. Yeah. And one of the couple of the blocks in Maplewood, New Jersey, borders yeah. Newark. Yeah. At no time have I ever said I grew up in Newark. We do everything possible to avoid saying we grew up in Newark, yet the people who live surrounding Cleveland mm -hmm. all say they're from Cleveland. And I say, these suburbs like Beechwood and Shaker Heights are beautiful, magnificent suburbs. Why would you ever say you live in Cleveland, which is hell? <laughs> and they all say, well, no one knows where these suburbs are. I said, well, you need to educate them. Because no one should know where well, Cleveland wait a minute, is. Wait a minute. I, now you can look at me too when I'm talking. I'll do whatever you want. Whenever. I I don't know. You, it's just. You I, should set up the cameras differently. No. I, then I'm gonna look here. It, it, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, uh, I had a girlfriend who was from Cleveland. When? And, it, uh -huh. In the fifties? No. When? No. Um, uh, the girlfriend I went with for like eleven years, who broke up with me eleven times in those eleven years. And she loved Cleveland. And then finally she and her mother moved back to Cleveland. Where? Cleveland. No, they didn't. Yes, Cleveland. The city of Cleveland. It, it was, the address said I, Cleveland. I went to their house and it was in Cleveland. Well, you know, greater Cleveland. Right. They didn't live in Cleveland. They lived in Cleveland. No, because it'd be like living in Newark. It, oh, my God. Really? Yes. Well, I went to visit her yes. in, in Cleveland. And I, it wasn't a bad little town, you know. It was it was a, a town that was somewhat depressed at that time. I don't know if it's still that depressed uh, financially. There are two Clevelands. There's Cleveland one and Cleveland two. Yeah. Cleveland one. Oh, by the way, this is this is Walter Sterling, might I say? Cleveland one yeah. Yeah. is where the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is. The Cleveland Art Institute is. Uh, Case Western Reserve, beautiful buildings, beautiful institutions, well financed, incredibly well landscaped, okay. gorgeous. Yeah. No one lives there. The people live in Cleveland too, which is the ring around the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and all of the yeah. nice exhibits. Yeah. Cleveland too is slums. It's all slums. It's burned out houses. It's oh, well, government no, she didn't live there. Right. It's government finance housing. And then Cle the third ring around Cleveland is the wealthy suburbs that. Aren't called aren't named Cleveland. They're called University Heights, Beechwood, Shaker Heights, Shaker Heights, yeah. Mayfield Heights. Those okay, are well, the. Okay. Well, she she lived in. Uh, you know that there's a whole area down there that's kind of in a gulch or something, and it's got f the the factories were there and the the flats. The flats, and she lived on the edge of the flats. Well, it could go either way. Could go either way. It was kind of a nice apartment house. Yeah, but she broke up with you. Yeah. And yet it haunts you to this day. No, yes, no, no, yes. Because she broke up with you. Um, yes. If you had broken up with her, it wouldn't haunt you. Well, no, we, we went together with each other for 11 years, I think it was. And she broke up with me 11 times during those 11 years. And then finally, the last time she broke up with me, I said, well, that's it, I'm not going back. And we didn't see each other for a long time. 
And then I went to Sirius XM and I got a job at Sirius XM and uh, I'm doing my show and all of a sudden I hear from her. She's living in Cleveland. And we strike up a conversation, we start talking with each other, finally I fly out there, I, we decide that we're in love with each other again, and then she comes out to visit me and on the first day she's here, she's saying, I decided I don't love you, so. Who was the other guy? There was no other guy. You know, if there was another guy, at least I could say, you know, I guess my dick isn't big enough or something, you know? But no, it wasn't another guy. When you were on over-the-air commercial broadcast, yeah. could you say the words blowjob? No. Why? Well, because uh, I could say blow. But you couldn't say blowjob. And job. I could, could say job. Yeah. But I couldn't say them in the same sentence. Now, Iggy Azalea said it multiple times on Hot 97 in New York, mm -hmm. multiple times, and they didn't bleep her. It was okay for Iggy Azalea. Would this hypocrisy bother you if you were a host today? Um, I think it probably would. I mean, yeah. I don't know why there should be a different standard for a woman than there is for a guy. You know, I don't find that acceptable. Okay. Now, how do you deal with this other issue, which is haunting me for the yeah, past two days? Turn a little bit that way. Which way? This way? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This, because the camera should be here. I know it should be, but But it you isn't. didn't put it there. But it is. No. So I watched this uh, Netflix special documentary yeah. on Harvey Weinstein. Yeah. And I, I watched... I, I started to watch it, but I couldn't, I couldn't get through it. it I watched it twice yeah. because there were women testifying against Harvey in this documentary who, to whom he had done terrible things, unquestionably horrible situation he deserves whatever he gets mm -hmm. got it but there was this other group of women who who told this story i went to his hotel room he was horrible to me he did unspeakable things i was very uncomfortable i left okay then a month later he came back to town he called me to his hotel room again and i went and he did unspeakable things. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whoa, yeah, yeah. and that's where it gets very confusing. To clear it up for me, mm -hmm. I went to the 14-year-old and 16-year-old daughters, and I said, I told them what I just told you. I said, what, 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 what how am I confused? She said, they said, you're not confused. That, that woman was an idiot. Those women are idiots. We'd never go back again. And the minute it would be uncomfortable, we know what a doorknob looks like. I'm like, thank you, I'm not insane. Yeah, but here, here's what the argument is. Yes. That the, that the uh, Me Too chicks uh, are saying. Chicks. Yeah, Me Too broads are saying, okay, is that he was a man of power. So? And so therefore he was exerting his power to get yeah. laid. Yeah. Uh, well, look at Harvey Weinstein. The only thing he could use to get laid was his power. Exactly. He certainly didn't have charisma. No. He didn't have beauty. You know, if these if, if these women had gone to, to an apartment and there was Robert Redford and he made a pass at them or Paul Newman, they would the next day be telling all their friends, guess who I fucked last night? You know? M maybe. But, but Weinstein was repulsive. Yes. Let's be honest about it. And I think his... He's, yes, he's very guilty of whatever he's guilty of, I'm yes. sure, okay? But he's also guilty of one other thing, being repulsive, because if he weren't that repulsive, he wouldn't be in this much trouble now. But at what point is a woman culpable or responsible if she goes back again? Well, See, that's the puzzle I, I to think, me. I think that if she knows what happened the first time and she goes back, then uh, I, I'm sorry, I can't sympathize with it. It's her. very difficult. Yeah. And it sort of negates the charges on her first visit because it, it, she was invested heavily even in the first visit if she'd go back again. Yeah. Well, I see, I understand the, the idea that he's a man of great power yeah. and that uh, they expected that maybe they were going to get something out of it. And uh, he used that power to impose upon them. And I understand that, and I understand any feminist or, or Me Too woman who would like to say that that was the problem, uh, that they're absolutely right. They're right. However, you do have the ability to say, well, fuck this, no job is worth, you know, giving a blow job yeah. to an ugly, horrible guy with probably a stumpy dick. Yeah. All right? Uh, and um, 
Uh, so the fact that they did it meant that they were willing to, at some point, compromise themselves uh, and uh, let him use his power uh, to intimidate them into doing something. Uh, you know, here's what I no, found. None of them said, excuse me, none of them said, and then he held a knife to my neck. All of them said that he, he took off his clothes, he masturbated in front of them. All you do is you turn around you and turn walk around, And you leave, right. you leave. But they felt if they did that, they would never work in Hollywood again. And that's where the power thing comes in. I think they were mistaken. I think they had the ultimate power because they could tell this story. Right, now you I'll know. tell you, good point. Now, very good point. Now I'll tell you who has the ultimate power. The ultimate power now are the other women impacted by Harvey Weinstein who haven't said a word. They have the ultimate power. The actresses who did get parts well, and Well, let's knew. talk about that for yes. a second. One of the women who came out and absolutely vilified, uh, let me get all these wires out of your way, absolutely vilified uh, uh, Weinstein after the fact, was uh, Gwyneth Paltrow. Now, let's remember that Gwyneth Paltrow is a fairly talentless actress. She's not a very good actress. She's mediocre at best. Harvey gave her the part in Shakespeare in Love and then went out as Harvey did every year and literally politicked to get her the Academy Award. He put out hundreds of thousands of dollars, whatever it took in advertising, publicity, greasing palms, whatever it took, to get her the Academy Award. Right. So how does she sit there and suddenly give this, you know, say terrible things about this guy? Oh, he came on to me and blah, blah. Gwyneth, you, you got an Academy Award for really mediocre. I mean, I don't know how she won it for that picture. She wasn't that good, you know? If she wants to do it without being a hypocrite, she returns the Academy Award. If she says, listen, it was all jumbled in my head. I was much younger. I should have never accepted this. I should have should have turned him in long ago. I am sorry. I'm telling you what happened. Here's this my is, Academy Award. But here's my here's to the Academy. I apologize to every other actress. She's not going to do that. No. You know. But and it also explains why... She, and, and by the way, we should say, folks, and you should understand this, we're not taking great sympathy with Harvey Weinstein at all. None. Because, you know, none, none at all. And none. In fact, you knew him, right? Or you knew his brother. I know his brother, and yeah. his brother was not him. Yeah, right. I met his brother at one of your parties. Uh, his brother was first to say, I'm not my brother. <laughs> but, he, you know, the other, the other part of that story that, that people don't fail to mention is that everybody knew this about Harvey Weinstein. You know, this was going on for years. Everybody, Harvey had a reputation for exactly this kind of behavior. He had a reputation for all known bad behaviors. Yeah. Temper, uh, inappropriate in restaurants, in public places, managing yeah. people. He was, he was a nightmare Yeah. in every way. Yeah. And um, it, um, but, but the thing about the actresses, uh, part of it is in the context of the history of Hollywood. Mm -hmm. This is old news in Hollywood. You know, it's yeah. old news in Hollywood. But I mean, everybody knew about Harvey Weinstein. Everybody yes. knew about his his uh, offensive nature in getting women to have sex with him. Yes. Uh, and so this, this wasn't like a big Hollywood secret that all of a sudden Ronan Farrow discovered. Okay? Um, now, Ronan's problematic in himself because... I wish Ronan I would Ron come out, yeah. forgive the expression, I wish Ronan would come out and say, Frank Sinatra is my father. Yeah, yeah. He owes us that for all this crusade of truth. Okay, Frank Sinatra has to be your father based on every photograph we've ever he, seen. He's certainly not Woody Allen's. Well, you betcha he's not Woody Allen. I mean, there's nothing there nothing. that looks like Woody Allen, you know. Plus, you combine the fact that he seems to hate Woody Allen it works. Yeah, yeah. If, if Woody Allen were truly his father, he probably wouldn't be throwing him to the wolves like this. He Daily. Might, he might dislike him, he might not have anything to do with him or whatever, but he wouldn't be vilifying him, you know? And, um, uh, but he, uh, uh, you know, I mean, uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. Where, 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 where's the, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm Frank Sinatra's son, 
You're absolutely right. I, uh, the thing is that I dislike entirely about Ronan Farrow is that he's made his success off of making other lives mis- people's lives miserable. Beyond miserable. Yeah. It's, uh, it's not like it's in, the, in a long crusade of, of uh, investigative journalism where he's saved hungry children in other countries. No, he came right out there. Yeah, <laughs> right out there and made uh, thousands, many, many lives. Isn't miserable. he another form of the National Enquirer in a way? It, no. Uh, what was the name of that magazine before the Enquirer? Confidential. Yes, he's Confidential magazine. Yeah, only because he does it over at the New Yorker. Oh, well then it's a Pulitzer. It's a Pulitzer, exactly. Then it's a dignified uh, uh, piece of journalism. Uh, uh, you know, but I mean, I, one day they're going to find out he's into something terrible. You know, but I'll tell you, and I will be the first one to just jump up and down with joy. There was a quote yeah. that for how this guy got off, got a free pass on this, I will never know. When the Harvey Weinstein story broke, and he did not break it, by the way, that was not his. Uh, that was uh, some guy, people over, I think, at the New York Times. Two I think women, you're right. two women over at the New York Times. Yeah. When that story broke, but then he capitalized on it. By you betcha. Yeah. That week, we all watched Saturday Night Live to see how they were going to parody it, mm-hmm. and they didn't touch it to the point where it was so such a negligence that they didn't touch the Harvey Weinstein story at all. When Lauren Michaels appeared in public later that week someplace, a bunch of reporters got around him, and one of the reporters said, why didn't you make fun of Harvey Weinstein this week? Why didn't you cover that in any of your sketches? Do you remember what Lauren Michaels said? It was amazing what he said. He said, quote, uh, uh, it's a New York thing. I'm like, what? what? It, it, it's a New York thing. Uh, and, uh, in a way, he's not wholly wrong in that. You know, that I'm sure this story about Harvey Weinstein did not play as strong in Iowa as it did in New York City. You know, it also played in Hollywood because he was a Hollywood player. Uh, I'll tell you, you know, there, and, and by I don't the way, think that's what it's he not was that saying. we're defending Harvey Weinstein, but yeah. there's a big difference between the Harvey Weinstein situation and the Bill Cosby situation. Entirely different. Bill Cosby was accused of drugging women. Entirely different. You know, which I could never understand because to begin with, he was a good looking guy when he was younger. And he was Bill Cosby. And he was Bill Cosby. He shouldn't have He could have just gotten laid so, on that alone. So part of his kick was knocking them out yes exactly that was part of his you know, king i mean i i don't know uh, uh why anybody would want to have sex with a woman who's comatose but then again i've been so boring at times i've made them that way so you know i just bore them to death and then they pass out and i hope they pass out with their mouth open but anyway uh you know i mean bill cosby terrible you know terrible but everybody knew that about cosby too did they? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, there were, you know, these were the the things that everybody knew. And hey, you know about Cosby. Hey, you know, well, especially you know about Weinstein. Oh, well, everybody knows about Weinstein. I mean, if, if uh, Gwyneth Paltrow went, or somebody, one of them went, uh, gee, I didn't know this was going on. Well, you're the last person in Hollywood who found out, okay? Uh, because uh, everybody knew that in Hollywood. It was just if if he if Weinstein asks you up to his apartment at 10 o'clock at night or any time uh, you better expect to go there and have him try to put the make on you and unless you don't if you don't want that then don't go so there was that option I'll tell you the guy I feel sorry for my friend Louis C.K. yes okay because to begin with he was in that first wave of the Me Too thing if it had happened right now he probably would skate on a certain level All right, but uh, Louis C.K. Supposedly, and he admits to it, said to a bunch of women in a room, about three of them, I think, uh, do you mind if I pull my penis out? Yeah. And nobody said no. So he pulled his penis out. He thought that was very funny. And I don't know if he started jerking off or whatever. I don't know what the rest of the story is, but he pulled the penis out. This is what he is guilty of. Now, to begin with, what's he guilty of? Being a perfect gentleman? I mean, he, he asked permission first. You could, and and w- not one of these women said, "No, don't do that," or "If you do that, I'm leaving," or uh, "I'm sorry, I'm leaving." 
it, they all stood there and watched him pull his penis out. And by the way, about that and that guy on the CBS Morning News, all these old guys who pull out their penises in public in front of women, what do they think the result is going to be? What do they think the result's going to be? What could be less appealing to a woman than an old guy randomly pulling out his penis and masturbating? Well, or, or even Louis C.K. doing that. But yeah, he was plenty old. Yeah, but and Louis supposedly did this a lot. This was he found this funny. Where do you do this a lot? Hmm? Where do you do this a lot? Shop right? How is this? How yeah, does this happen? Yeah. But all I'm saying is, is that I think that I, you know, there are a lot of women in this world who get raped. They get beaten by their husbands. Or they are abused in one way or another. And somehow some of this stuff tends to trivialize it. I mean, some of these stories. I mean, uh, I'm sorry. What Louis C.K. did was inappropriate at, at worst. At worst, but nobody got hurt. Yeah, nobody got hurt. And yet now Louis C.K. See, what I don't understand, at the same time that all this is going on and Louis C.K. has lost his career and many others have too, there are NFL players who have hit their wives and they're playing football. Or Chris Brown, who hit, uh, who hit um, uh, Beyonce, mm. and he's still uh, booking concerts. And I'm like, no, no. In my opinion, if, you, if a man hits a woman, mm -hmm. that's it. Yeah. You don't work again. Yeah. You're not, no one should be allowed to hire you. Uh, no one should allow allowed to rent an apartment to you. You don't get you, your all your passes are used up. You hit a woman, you're done. Yeah. To me, that's the simplest equation that could possibly be. And I hear yeah. no well, now I'll, women screaming for this. But I'll tell you what happens also. Yes. Uh, it's it's the judgment and the penalty before any proof is presented. In other words, these companies get rid of people because the accusation has been made. All, all it had been is an accusation, and they let you go. Yeah, the HR police. And uh, let me give you a meta theory. My mm -hmm. meta theory is this. Mm -hmm. The reason these things happen, mm -hmm. that uh, people do dumb things in the workplace and the HR police put an end to it and people get fired, is that we work on the false assumption that we should all get along. Mm -hmm. And I would suggest that we are, by DNA, not supposed to get along that we are not supposed to get along based on DNA. Because if we all got along, mm -hmm. the species would have died out years ago because there would not have been enough food. If there was enough, if, if everybody got along and said, oh yeah, here's all the food, we share it equally, mm -hmm. well, the food would run out quickly. Mm -hmm. The yeah. reason that wars and everything started was uh, there wasn't enough food. Yeah. And there wasn't enough water. So we're programmed to fight. By the way, folks, that's his hand coming into my camera, just like I can get mine to go into his. Uh, you know, if you turn that way yeah. and then look at me, yeah. then they'll get a better well, shot of you. Right. You know, that's it. That's the... Anyway, the, so the, the point I'm making is, is that... that uh, uh, I, certainly, I don't countenance this behavior. It's no behavior that I would ever involve myself in. No. Although, I don't know, maybe there's some crazy woman out there who wants to say I did something inappropriate, but I certainly never have, to my knowledge. Okay. Which, of course, brings up, how about the wacky women? The ones who want to get even. Well, the, you know, all of a sudden, they're, they're, what happens is they're believed immediately, and the man is... Every man and some women, if they're honest, will tell you there are crazy women. Yeah. The ones who call you at 2.22 in the morning for no reason. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to call to say hi. Yes, it's 2.22 in the morning. Oh, really? I just thought I'd call and see how you were doing. Okay, those are the most terrifying women in the world yeah. because often they have reasonable jobs. Often they dress nicely, mm -hmm. but they never blink when they look at you <laughs> they never blink they always seem to have trouble with their contacts well i just think the problem i have is that it's the it's it's gone the opposite the burden of the proof is now on the guy to prove he didn't do it even if it's completely unfounded right which is impossible yeah which is impossible no i didn't rape you oh boy just by saying that you sound like you raped somebody but notice that these guys aren't aren't being accused of rape they're being accused of incredibly minor crimes like they made an inappropriate joke or they said you know is that a pickle in your pocket they, 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 yeah. they just said stupid things they said stupid guy things and now it's suddenly inexcusable i mean there are some stories we get like uh, matt lauer 
you know, who supposedly yeah, had an got automatic, rid of him. automatic lock on the door when yeah. a woman came in. Yeah, you but, know, you know, I like know, that. That, you know, and the problem with that story, mm -hmm. I know many executives with the automatic lock on the door, and it's not to keep women in. It's just so they don't have to get up to shut their door for privacy. They got a button under their desk to shut the door yeah. to so that they didn't have to get up, so they'd have privacy. And then it didn't lock them in. It didn't lock anybody in. It would just automatically yeah. shut the door. Yeah. But it, but all I'm saying is even Matt Lauer yeah. it was out of a job, out of a very well-paying job. Immediately. Immediately. And to this day, he's never been tried for anything. He's no. never been found guilty of anything. There's never even been, I think, a civil suit against him. No, same thing with the guy at CBS Morning News. Charlie Rose. Charlie Rose. Just gone. That's Just it. Gone. Career shuttled. No charges. And no charges, nothing. Now, is that right? You know, and, no. and and he should have some. Recourse, and by the way, he should have some recourse against CBS. And for years, when big companies said, "I'm going, we're going to fire you based on these allegations," the immediate retort was, "You can fire me after a trial, and I'm found guilty." And then the companies would go, "Whoa, okay, we're not doing anything." Listen, I have a big, I have a friend who's a big, big deal at CBS. Uh, he was a CBS vice president, in charge of something big. I won't say who he is. Don't say. But uh, he was thrown out by the company because he got accused of, of using a homophobic slur, I think. And this had been investigated two years earlier by CBS, and they decided it didn't happen at all. Okay? And then all of a sudden, somebody brought it up again, and they said, you got to go. And he was out of a job. I'm going to pay him like a you know, quarter of a million dollars a year or whatever. But he, and he was a big deal over at CBS it's that kind of thing and this is one of the nicest guys you'll ever know okay but it also goes to another thing which I discussed with my daughters mm -hmm. and w I was taught by our mutual late friend Lynn Samuels mm -hmm. Lynn was talking on the air about date rape and she said if you invite a guy back to your apartment and you both have some wine and he goes further than you want it's not nice, but it's not rape. That's what Lynn said. That's not a bad way of putting it. And she, I, I think, I think though, anything short of absolute permission is 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 improper. I'm quoting. It's her. not the behavior that I. I mean, I was always. It may have been that I was so shy about things that I would wait for a woman to absolutely say, hey, you want to fuck me? Before I would even do it. Yeah. You know. I, no, I agree with you, and I've always behaved that way, but it was interesting that Lynn said that. Yeah. She said, don't, don't go calling that rape, because in her mind, rape was a violent surprise and you, and, and And the people, women who truly get raped, this diminishes them. It would seem to. Yeah. And that's what, I, what bothered me about the Me Too movement, is I felt much of it diminished... The, the women who really had a claim against somebody. The next wave will be men coming forward and saying, you know what, I was abused by a woman at work. I was abused by a woman at power at work. Because men aren't quite brave enough to do that yet. It's way too humiliating. Well, but they will also laugh at him because we men are supposed to, oh, well, the, and you didn't want to get fucked? You know, they think every guy wants to get fucked. I'll it's, tell you, I mean, I tell the story. I've told the story any number of times about the time that I was raped by a woman, okay? Uh, I was depressed because I'd broken up with my girlfriend again. This woman I knew came over. She said, I don't want to drive back to San Jose. I said, well, you can sleep here. And she hopped in the bed, and I hopped in the bed. And I said, I'm very depressed. And in the middle of the night, she started following me. And I said, no, please, I really don't feel like it because... Yeah. I'm really depressed over breaking up with my girlfriend and I just, I don't want to do this. And she just kept going and kept going and kept going. Well, you know, people always said, oh yeah, sure, you got raped. Well, yes, I did. You know, I mean, in, 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 the, in the true sense, or not forcibly, but I got raped nonetheless. And, and it was non-consensual. And yet, as much as I tried to tell people this happened, they all said to me, well, come on, you know, she blew you. What, no, what's the big I to deal? I know? totally understand. I've been in situations where a woman really wanted to do it, mm -hmm. and I really didn't, mm -hmm. and she wouldn't stop. Uh, 
two or three times and she wouldn't stop right and the only way this was going to stop without her going crazy or mm -hmm. getting really angry was to just do it mm -hmm. but it was no fun but if you weren't a guy and you were a woman and she was a guy doing the same exact thing to you that'd be rape right yes so the um but nobody wants to believe that a guy can doesn't want it all the time okay that's part of the problem it's a, it's a serious misunderstanding about male sexuality mm -hmm. because my default mode is not i want to have sex now my mm -hmm. default mode is i want to read the new york post <laughs> while drinking dunkin donuts coffee yeah. while watching tv yeah. alone yeah. That's my default mode. Yeah. Now, you want to throw in sex later? I need about an hour's notice. Right. It's not... Uh, and even young, stupid guys... You want time to brush your teeth. At the very least. Mm -hmm. Young, stupid guys in fraternities, they, they don't want it all the time either. Yeah. And uh, I, you know, the reason that men cheat mm -hmm. in marriage is not for sex. It's for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. It's for a woman to say, don't worry about where your socks are. Mm -hmm. It's, you, you know, you look great today. You're such a good father. It's not about sex. It's about forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And um, th that's, what, that's what women are very confused about. Yeah, but I mean, I th some people listening to us right now probably will take what we're saying here as, as cond condoning somebody like Harvey Weinstein and what he did. And that's not what we're no, saying No, he was an asshole. All. That's an asshole. Yeah. Uh, that's not what we're saying at all. What we're saying is that it's terrible. And, but nevertheless, there has to be a certain responsibility on the part of the women as well. And this idea that, oh, well, he had well, power. Well, you can't. You can't, and then I'll shut up. You can't say, I want to be chairman of the board unless you accept responsibility for all of your actions in every part of your life. Well, wait a minute. You fucked him because you thought you might get a part in a movie. Yeah. Okay. He used his power to get sedu to seduce you. You then fucked him. At what point do you suddenly become a whore? Early on. I mean, at, at a certain point, you have to be responsible for for the action. Oh Early well, on. but if I didn't sleep with him, I wouldn't have gotten the movie part. Well, mm -hmm. then if you did sleep with him to get the movie part, that's kind of the definition of a whore. By the way, what's sad is a lot of those women did sleep with him and did, and got no parts. That's that that was a good be a good reason for them to sue him, yeah. uh, you know. But I mean, uh, all, all I'm saying is is that uh, to begin with, Harvey Weinstein was a uh, 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 disgusting looking disgusting human being. man, and and nobody would want to fuck him if he didn't have power. And uh, uh, but what he's guilty of is being ugly more than anything else. Because if, as I say again, if it were Paul Newman or it were you know, George Clooney, uh, even, you know, some of these accusations are, well, he patted me on the ass. I think, well, what was it? Who was it they got on that one? Oh, yeah, uh, Al Franken. Supposedly he, in a photograph, had he his He pretended hand... to squeeze somebody's breast. No, well, that, that, was, that was something else. There was another one they accused him of where he had his hand behind in the picture, and the yeah. woman said he was grabbing my butt. Well, if it were George Clooney, I will guarantee you she would have never complained about it, you know? Yes, and that's the part that women owe men to take responsibility for. Well, I, I just, I, you know, on the other hand, we're also talking about situations in which none of these things have been tried in court. Did, 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 Ever. Uh, did Al Franken get tried in court? No. The only, only one got tried in court. Only one. Which one? It's very interesting. The disc jockey accused of squeezing Taylor Swift's butt. Oh, yeah. That did go to civil court, and, and she he won. lost. And she won. Yeah. And, uh, however, I had him on my show, my yeah. radio show. Yeah. And I said on the air, and I'll say here, I don't believe he did it. And the reason I don't believe he did it, he was a morning man at a country station in Denver, Colorado. Mm -hmm. And he was way at the top of the radio food chain. Mm -hmm. And he knew that Taylor Swift was incredibly powerful and famous. Mm-hmm. And if you think that guy was going to screw up that job by squeezing her butt, you're crazy. There's no way he would risk that job. And what did he say? He, he said, I didn't do it. A thousand times he said he didn't do it. So I why said, did he settle? He didn't settle. He, didn't he settle. lost and had oh, to give oh, her oh. a buck. Oh, that was right. 
Yes, the one dollar thing. Yeah, because she knew it. The, there was probable. Did he doubt. lose his job? Yes, there was reasonable doubt because the promotion guy was standing right there. Has he too. ever gotten a job since then? In a backwater, crappy place. Yeah. Wow. What? It's serious. Uh, <laughs> no, no, they uh, they couldn't afford them. They, all right, I gotta they, go to bed. They didn't want to pay that kind of money. Anyway, you gotta go to bed. This is Walter Sterling. You can hear him on uh, any one of a number of radio stations around the the world, practically. This is some rig. This is fancier than any radio station. Yeah, but I've no, ever but, been but, wait a minute. Uh, tell them where they can find you. Yeah. About eighty radio stations, including WLS in Chicago, WPHT in Philadelphia. Uh, KMOX, KDKA in Pittsburgh, KMJ in Fresno, KFBK in Sacramento, about 80 stations throughout the country at 10 p.m. Sunday night Eastern, 10 p.m. Eastern to 1 a.m. And he does Eastern. it from his laundry room and his from home in From my laundry room. Yes. And uh, uh, it, was, uh, it was a pleasure to do your pleasure show. To, a pleasure to have you do my show. And um, thanks th for having thank me you very much. Show. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a Walter Sterling. That's his name. Okay. Thank you, Walter. Thank you. There he goes. He's going to go out the door. Close the door behind yes, you sir. there. So the girlfriend doesn't have to hear all the noise that's going to go on in here. Anyway, uh, listen, folks. I think it's time for me to open up the uh, Skype lines, okay? I enjoy my discussions with Walter. He's a good guy. Good guy. Uh, and uh, over the years has been a very major force in the broadcasting business, I might add. Okay, so we're ready to go. Let me just turn on the uh, uh, the lines here uh, so that we can uh, wait for people to call, uh, which will happen, hopefully. Uh, I'm tired again today. I don't know why. Why am I tired today, but I wasn't tired last night. I was energized last night, actually. I guess because I took one night off. Anyway, our lines are open. Uh, if you don't know how to call, uh, uh, go ahead. Do you know what they, I just noticed on Skype? They're actually running ads on Skype now. I, 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 I don't know if anybody notices that, but they are actually running ads on Skype. Uh, did you notice that at all, Charlie? Let me see here. Let me, let me, uh, uh, let me, uh, 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 oh, oh, well, okay, well, I did the transition. Okay, I, I really didn't want to jump like that. I wanted to. I wanted to do it kind of like like this, you know, where I where where I actually can like go from me, uh, see to the see that's very gentle, you know. But anyway, hello, Charlie. How are you? Hi, Alex. Oh, I'm dead tired. You you're well. You're moving, and I guess that place is empty right now, right? Yeah, there's nothing in here except what'll fit in my car. Really? Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. Here here comes oh Brian Ludwig. Son of a bitch! Brian, long time. Wow. Yeah, Brian. Hold on a second. Let me uh, let me uh, let me put his picture up here. Let me see here. He would be. Oh, there he is. Okay. Okay. We go. Okay. And here comes uh, Josh Wheeler. And I don't know. Was he in the number one spot last night? I don't think so. But we'll see. Uh, Josh, give, give us some picture here. Josh, give us some picture. Okay. And I guess he was in another spot last night. Okay, here comes Phil Meyer. Okay, now wait a minute. Hold on a second. I gotta, I gotta start bringing these people up. Hold on a second. Uh, first, we put uh, Phil Meyer. We'll put him up at the top there. Hold on a second. Uh, scuba diver. There we go. Okay, and then I gotta go to the uh, the six pack which then we'll put in uh, Brian. Here comes Brian. Uh, da, 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 da. He's that one, I believe. Uh, doesn't exactly use a name, but that's okay. Oh, there we go. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. We got, well, who do we have? Wait a minute. Who do we have? Oh, well, I guess I got I to gotta put, um, put Josh Wheeler in that, in that uh, thing. Okay. So, I, Josh, where are you? There we go, Josh W42. Okay, uh, there we go, and then I can and then I can just do this and ta da! There we go. Hi everybody, how are you this evening? Pretty good. Brian, we haven't heard from you in a while. Where have you been? What's been up with your life? Uh, new job, new 
parameters. N new job? Yeah. Uh, what kind of new job? Uh, uh, bus driving. Bus driving. Oh, uh, bus driving? Yes. I, I don't know if I could do that. Isn't that a little unwieldy, all those big truck? It's a big bus, right? How big a bus is it? Uh, 84, 90 passenger. 84, 90 passengers? go round and round. The wheel on the bus goes round and round. So, so you, uh, don't you feel a great deal of responsibility for the lives in the, of the people in that truck, in that bus? Of course. But it's... It is what it is. Do you have to go out and get a bus driver's license, right? A passenger endorsement as well as a uh, school bus driver's endorsement as well. Okay, so did you Depending have that? Depending on what you do. Did you have that before you did this, or did, is that new? Uh, I did. Actually, I did. Then I, uh, think, thinking I would never do it again, mm -hmm. back in 2015, I let it expire. Yeah. And I uh, test into, uh, into uh, getting it acquired all over again. So. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. But I knew what I was doing, so it didn't Yeah, yeah. So anyway, uh, let me see here. So I, well, I went and I got a new thing today. I don't know if I can show it here. Though. I, no, I don't have enough cord here. I got the newest uh, Echo. Excuse me. It just, oh. what time is it? The time is 10.46 p.m. Okay. Anyway, um, um, uh, I got this new, we'll call her Alexa. Okay. Uh, that that uh, is the new small one, and it just fits right here, and it's really nice. But it's not telling me all the things I want to know, like, what are my appointment? Uh, uh, Echo, what are my appointments coming up? Echo, what are my appointments? You don't have any. <laughs> Echo's park <laughs> They're like something out of the Twilight Zone. Yeah, okay, e e Echo, stop, 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 stop. Okay. Anyway, so I got it's cute. It's really adorable. But the thing is, I, I really, uh, how could I, um, what would be the term I would use to get it to uh, not display anything? Um, uh, let's see here. Um, Echo, go to sleep. Let's see what happens. Okay. Nothing about happened. Unplug Echo. <laughs> Echo, wake up. Alarm for what time? Alarm for what time? I don't want an alarm, you cunt. There's no alarm set. Uh, yeah, no alarm set. Okay, all right. Stop anyway. recording your voice and submitting it to uh, private interests. Yeah, right, exactly. So anyway, uh, so how, how, how are you tonight, Phil? I'm tired. Uh, I, I've had a rough week. Yeah, because your and, dog, right? Yeah. Well, it, the dog uh, was the major part of it. <clears throat> oh, it was it? Oh, that's right. Oh, she's uh, she's nine. Um, she had a uh, burst. Uh, she she ruptured. Uh, she had a tumor. We didn't know. It was very aggressive, very fast growing, and was on her spleen. Mm -hmm. So uh, Sunday night after we got back from Ray Renati's play. Which, mm -hmm. by the way, was was excellent. He is, uh, he's he's very good. Oh, of course, you know? I'm sure he and, is. Yeah, um, it was uh, it was a real pleasure seeing it. Yeah. And uh, so we uh, got back from the play, and mm -hmm. my dog was kind of yeah, a little listless, and you know, but you know that happens. She's she gets moods. Mm -hmm. So uh, about two in the morning, Faye woke up, and the dog, uh, her chin was. Uh, on, um, actually, when we came home, her neck was, was bent over. I guess she was internally bleeding. We didn't realize it. And she had lost an awful lot of blood. And, uh, in, and it was in her abdomen. So uh, she was, uh, you know, we, we just figured, okay, you know, we'll take her to the vet in the morning. Well, uh, she got up, and the dog is laying with her chin on her water bowl, listless, couldn't move, no energy. Her tongue was white. Her gums were white. Faye got up, rushed her to the ER, and uh, they stabilized her with uh, fluids mm -hmm. and so forth. And uh, once uh, once she was stable enough, they operated on her and they removed her spleen and the tumor. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the news we got uh, yesterday was that the tumor was uh, malignant 
very very aggressive and she at best could have two months left so you know i'm trying to make her as comfortable as possible also spend you know as much time as possible with her and uh yeah i just had her dog put down of uh 14 years yeah lab aussie mix and she got a new one the second day at a shelter but I, I don't think I could ever go through this again. Uh, well, you know, I, 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 I said that many years ago when I finally had a bunch of cats finally die on me. Not, not well, you remember them, Phil. Yeah. Uh, one of them, uh, who was the guy from BAM Magazine's brother? Um, uh, er, 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 um, Eric. Er, Erokian. Er, er, uh, yeah, but it's the brother. Uh, yeah. John? John. Jonathan? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm pretty sure he was the one that took your cat to have him euthanized. Because we were sitting around the table that night. Mm -hmm. uh, I couldn't do it myself. I just couldn't, you know. Uh, uh, I want to be there. You want to be there. Yeah, I just couldn't do it. I just, you know. uh, Well, I had one die actually in the apartment, lying in the sun. It was very nice. That's easier. But... um, uh, you know, my, my cat Shabbos, who was 18 years old and knew more about me than I knew about myself because he saw me every day of my life and saw my intimate moments. When he went, it was I, he had to be put down, and I just couldn't do it. I just, yeah, I just yeah. love this animal so much. And, and the thing is that I've had parents die. You know, I've had friends die. And I don't think I was as depressed over their death as I was over this these animals and I think this is the truth that most people uh, the death of of an animal is a greater thing to them than just about any death of a person they know yes yes uh, Brian that reminds me you mentioned uh, friends and family Uh, uh, I guess your ex-wife or whatever how is she still among us or has she oh yeah yeah she's still she's still hanging in there yeah yeah all right that's we we have her on every two weeks you know, uh, I think she'll be around for a little while. You know, I, I the, the thing is that uh, they, they give you a death sentence, but then it's like life itself. You know, you don't know when, you know. But anyway, well, what I'm saying. I, I don't want her to suffer at all. You yeah. Know, uh, yeah. When I start seeing, uh, you know, some listlessness. Uh, is she, uh, is she, is she okay she, right now? I mean, now that she had her operations well, and stuff? Yeah, she's got a big scar, and so. Uh, we've been keeping ice packs on and off of it to yeah. keep down the inflammation and to make her comfortable. Yeah. But with the stitches, we have to stay with her. On uh, they will stay, and then uh, she'll go to sleep. Let, let for me ask a few you a question. Hours. Let me ask you a question. We don't want her to take the stitches out. This is probably a rude question to ask, but I want to ask it. Um, I've never stopped you. Before. Huh? No. Uh, rude <laughs> well, it's not rude. It's not rude. It's just the, the, the question is simple. Um, how much has this cost you so far? Uh, oh, at this point, uh, eleven thousand. Eleven thousand? Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Although I owe uh, Rob uh, uh, Alfano uh, a debt of gratitude because uh, several years ago he was talking about his cat mm-hmm. and that he had uh, healthy paws cat insurance. Yeah. Uh, they're paying eighty percent. I had to lay out the eleven grand and then submit, uh, which I haven't done 11 yet. Eleven grand, you know, uh, wow. Uh, because my it's business, my business manager had a dog have some problems, and he wound up putting out five thousand dollars. You yeah. know, this is almost more expensive than human stuff. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, but uh, yeah, it's not the money. Uh, I I needed. You see, for instance, if uh, if she, if she, if she didn't if she had a tumor or uh, or a hematoma maybe mm-hmm. that burst and uh, she had to have the spleen and the tumor removed. Yeah. If she didn't have cancer and I didn't elect to do this operation, I couldn't buy the time. Yeah. That, uh, yeah. That I needed. 
Let me. Just, I'm, I'm just trying to get uh, find him here. There we go, Goomba. So, okay. so Goomba. by having. Yeah. Oh, listen. I just want. I just want to. Just keep talking. I just got to go for a second. Okay. So you keep sure. talking. Okay. But by having the operation, what that allowed was, uh, you know, it would have been a death sentence if we didn't have the operation. She would have had to have been euthanized immediately. But by doing it. Uh, then we could find out if it was if she had cancer and if she didn't have cancer and I didn't do the operation it would have been a, a pity Wow So, you know yeah, it's tough. yeah, I've gone through that three times you know, three uh, different I don't times. know how you did it. This I dog, can't do it anymore. This dog's my best friend yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, what I was saying, what I was trying to say earlier, I just had to go make sure that Walter wasn't turning on the air conditioner. Uh, otherwise, I would, I would just lose everything here. Uh, uh, you know, that's the bottom line on it. I mean, that's, uh, you know, that, that, that here you're, you're willing to put out, well, 11,000. You, if you didn't have the insurance, you'd still put out the 11,000, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. You know, and I, I think that there was a time when, you know, veterinarians were into veterinarianism or whatever you call it, uh, yeah. not for the money, but for the uh, for, for the love of animals. And I, I don't think that's the case anymore. I mean, it, it, they're getting what doctors get, for Christ's sake. Well, uh, I I would visit her uh, after the after the operation. Yeah, uh, I'd visit her in the morning. I'd visit her in the afternoon. We left her there for a couple of days because we wanted her under pain meds and to be really stabilized. Yeah. Uh, and and you you, you know, mentioned, however, in one of your uh, uh, messages to me, that you have an oncologist for her. Well, they they're giving they part of this is that they want me to talk to an oncologist uh, about chemo, and oh. I I've decided that there's no way I'm going to put her through that. Uh, there's no way that I'm going to uh, just extend her life for me and and have her suffer. Yeah. So, but I got questions. And you know, I and so I'll talk to the oncologist. Uh, matter of fact, it's tomorrow morning, and uh, you know, I'll talk to them and I will ask questions and uh, understand what to look for and make sure that I make the decision before yeah. they're suffering. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Well, sorry to hear about it. You know. Thanks. Uh, yeah. And uh, you, know, you never know. I mean. My brother-in-law, the, the golf course superintendent, you know, he had his his lab that, you know, was like the dog that went to work with him every day and ran around everywhere he went and everything. When that dog was like 15, it developed some sort of tumor like that that ruptured. And they did some surgery. It wasn't nearly as serious as that, so it cost him a little bit, like not, not nearly that much, like 2000 bucks. And they took it out and gave him the news, and they said, well, you know, if you don't do anything at all, you know, she'll probably live three or four months you know yeah. or you can do this that and the other and she might live seven or eight months so he didn't do anything because you know the dog was like 15 years old and he didn't want her to suffer but you know she lived two more years yeah. i mean yeah. <laughs> well it, the, like, the, it, it, but it was a good two years it wasn't like she was yeah, suffering all the time she lived for two years fine and then one day just fell over and died well i mean the so, can't the the, uh, the wait, 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 hold on a second. Before I go on any further, worst. who's crying? What baby is crying? Uh, I'm hearing a baby not crying. Not me. Yeah. So anyway, the one that she has is is the worst. It's so aggressive. What will happen is uh, she'll either bleed to death internally or uh, she'll uh, she'll suffocate because uh, uh, it, it acts on the lungs. And uh, I, I'm just not going to go there. I'm not going to allow that. Yeah. Now, uh, I'm looking at uh, having uh, a vet come to the house yeah. and euthanize her here in her bed. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah. yeah, you can do that. That's helpful. Well, it's, it's, you know, it, 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 it's very sad. Uh, I feel very bad for you, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, but, I mean, he's right in the fact that it's, at the end of the day, it's not that much different than people. I mean, they don't know. You know? 
Yeah. Right. No, they, they live in the present. <coughs> yeah, they live in the present. Right. Right. Yeah. Mm. I mean, they just take the information they have and give you a judgment, but that doesn't mean, you know, it's good or it's bad. I mean, we've been through this before. I mean, I don't want to bore everybody with it, but we've been through this before with our cats, and we've basically ran like a cat rescuing operation. I mean, we have had so many in the time that my wife and I have been together that we've taken care of. And, you know, obviously when you have them for a long time, they get, they eventually get sick and die. I mean, they're just like people. So we've been through kidney disease and we've been through heart disease. I mean, we've been through everything. But I think, I I think I feel like, like Phil does when my cats died, I don't think I ever got another cat again for exactly. We have, I mean, you know, you had another cat at the time. No, no, I had several cats. And it, we once, had Mouse at the well, time, well, Shabbos. Well, Mouse was the last one to survive. Yeah. And when she died, I never got another animal. Yeah. And I think part of the reason is is that, you know, I, 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 you know, I, I was getting older to begin with. But uh, right now I wouldn't get a cat because I'm afraid that, what happened? We just, Ray's frozen now. What, what happened? Oh, yeah, Ray, Ray had some noise in the background and signed off, I think. Oh. What was that? All the screaming and the crying and the. Okay, and the looks like he's in IKEA. Uh, who knows? But you know, I mean, um, I wish he wouldn't yeah. just hang up like that. You know. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, something else happened uh, on the way home. Mm-hmm. So uh, I see Ray's play, and mm-hmm. on the way to Ray's play, mm-hmm. uh, there was a six-car accident, and I was the last car to get hit. I didn't hit the guy in front of me. I got rear-ended. Uh, an Uber driver, uh, I, the traffic stopped, I stopped, mm-hmm. the guy behind me stopped, the guy three more cars back was doing mm-hmm. 55 looking at his phone yes. and slammed into all of us. Oh, wow. Hey, Alex, so, sorry I hung up. I, I was trying to turn off my mic and I hung up. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that was the baby here where I'm at. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Anyway, so, um, uh, so th- then you also had, a, there was an automobile thing. Right, too. so I, 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 my rear bumper is smashed, and uh, so, but I made it to Ray's play in time. <laughs> I wasn't late, <laughs> four minutes to spare, and uh, so saw the play, saw Ray, and uh, then went back to the dog stuff. Wow. Anyway, yeah, so it's it's yeah. been, and last night, you know, because we're we're, uh, you know, I'll sleep for a few hours and make sure that she doesn't uh, rip out her stitches. I don't want to put the cone on her. You know, she's only got a, uh, a short time to live, and the last thing I want is the cone uh, around her neck. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's. I'd rather stay up, watch her, put an ice pack on her to make her comfortable, and, uh, mm-hmm. and you know, and we do it in shifts. Okay, so well, I told we, we Faye not to uh, work okay. anymore. Okay, we've depressed people enough as it is yeah. here with that. Um, um, let me see here. What else is there to talk about? Now we, we, we've lost Ray well, again. We, yeah, I don't know. Uh, we, we can talk about, uh, you know, uh, death, euthanasia. Uh, you know, I mean, you've been talking to your ex-wife for a while. You're an expert on the subject. I'm not an expert on the subject, you know. Well, uh, more so than most. It, it, well, you know, it's, dif- it's difficult for me, you know, mm-hmm. uh, with her. You know, I mean, it's 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 a uh, um, uh, 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 that's a that's a situation which. Uh, why do the lights keep flicking around here? What is the problem? Jeez, Almighty! Uh, did they start uh, old Sparky up in Ossining again? I don't know what the story is because <laughs> that's it, the electric chair at Sing Sing. Yeah, no. It was, it was, well, let me turn off the air conditioner and let me see. Let me see what happens here. If they if they flicker, still flicker. That's why I got oh, up and went and turned this one down because I figured. It, you know, it was right on the edge. You know now, something? I got to tell I you, Ray, Ray. Can I be very honest about something? That's very annoying. You know, I mean, we're trying to do a show here, and we're doing video, and you're off and on, and you're sideways, and you're. You well, know. no, no, Alex, it's not me. It's Skype. I'll just hang up. I, I mean, yeah, I can't yeah, help yeah, the thing. Yeah, Skype yeah. Sucks. Well, I mean, it's just that it's it's difficult. You know, for it, it's very difficult for the audience to have to see stuff going on and off and up and down and all everything if, if you can call us from someplace that's stationary you know um, 
uh, we were getting a good we were getting a good Skype signal. I don't know that it was Skype's problem. I just think that you weren't exactly knowing how to how to turn it's off the audio. It's hard on a phone when you're walking yeah, around. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, unless you got a steady cam like you do, uh, the um, uh, it jumps up and down a lot. No, but also also you've got you've got problems with just turning it on and off and things like that. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. Oh, by the way, I got the new iPhone program. An eleven? Yeah, the new. Uh, uh, oh. You know, it's now. It's now. They now have dark mode. If you can see that, see that, folks. Mm. It's dark mode. Huh. Uh, and I can go into a non non dark mode too. But uh, what, what what is that? What does that mean? That you go to yeah. the other side, you become a Republican. And yeah, you go to the, the dark, dark side. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, they, they, yeah, somehow dark seems to be the new thing everybody wants in, in on computers, you know. Uh, uh, I use the dark mode on my Mojave here. Uh, and, uh, um, you know, so it, it's, 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 a, it's kind of, uh, uh, it's annoying. I have no idea what that means. Yeah, wh- well, they, what it is, it, it, how do I explain it? I guess you, you, you don't have a Mac, do you? Uh, Charlie's no. been in dark mode all his life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, that, one more way, we're sticking it to black people, man. That's all. That, <laughs> yeah, that, it, 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 it's, it's true. Let's privilege, see here. Bro. Um, I got to get uh, Charlie, uh, get, get Patrick on here. Wait a minute. Hold on a second, Patrick. I'm gonna, I'm gonna find you. Uh, you're. Uh, let's see here. You're gonna be Darth Pat. There we go. And, uh, Did you hear that, Patrick? He, he's going to find you. He knows where you live. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to take my underwear off, and then he can find me. Yeah, yeah. No, dark mode is. You know what dark mode is, right, Patrick? Because you've got a you've got a Mac. Yeah. And do you have Mojave? Uh, yeah. Okay, so you know what the dark mode is? It's it, 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 it's almost like um reversing everything else. Well, yeah. what all the stuff that was once light and white and so on is now dark. Yeah. Yeah. And so you're working yeah. against a dark background a lot. And uh, what do they call that in photography plaster plasticize uh, no, uh, no. I don't when know what it is, but, but it's it is kind of annoying in its own strange way. Uh, but like I got a pro- I have a program I use here called uh, 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 quick and easy What's what's the name of it? Quick and easy, uh, whatever. It's what I do the the website with, and um, they just went to they have dark mode now, and I went to, and it's dark, and I don't want to use dark mode because I'm used to using light mode with that, but there's nowhere in there to turn it off of dark mode. I've been spending days trying to figure out where, and I can't figure. Ask it out. Siri. Oh. Yeah. Or go on Google. You know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Uh, Echo, what is dark mode? Light on dark color scheme, also called dark mode, dark theme or night mode, is a color scheme that uses light colored text, icons, and graphical user interface elements on a dark background and is often discussed in terms of computer user interface design and web design. See? These lights have been flickering all night. I expect the electricity to go out any minute now. I don't know. Didn't they close about. the Indian Point nuclear plant? It could be. I don't know. But I mean, all of a sudden, I'm I'm not. And this it has nothing to do with the air conditioner. So I'm going to turn it back on. But no, my lights are flickering, and I have no idea why. I mean, it doesn't seem to be affecting the equipment at all. But anyway. Uh, so let me see here. What is there? Um, um, so I got this new this new um, uh, Alexa. I'll call it that, so she doesn't react. And it's like a little. Uh, it's it's about like this this big. And and they they uh, the reason I bought it was they're ninety nine bucks. And uh, 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 Amazon said if you buy one today, you get it for sixty nine ninety five. How could I fail? Right, so now every room in my house has some kind of uh, 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 Alexa type thing. Have you tied them all together? They're all together. Yeah, sure, they're tied together. Oh, okay. yeah. I mean, they all work off the same thing. There goes, there goes the thing. It, the air conditioner did it that time. I don't know what's happening tonight. 
do you know uh, something must be going right? There's almost no lag between uh, the YouTube and the Skype. No, no lag between the YouTube and the Skype. Maybe a second. Oh the, no, the, it, it can't be that way. You're. I'm looking at the picture and I'm listening to what you're well, saying. Well, I don't know what you're doing. Yeah, you're right. Wait a minute. I put my hands up like this and I'm looking at it and my hands aren't going right up. So. Well, your your mouth is moving in sync to the to the words then you're uh, within you're, a second. Then you're maybe looking at something else. I don't know. But it's it's not uh, it's not the same situation here. You know, yeah. So. Oh, Phil, in sync. Well, 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 there you there you go, taking us off 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 target by going to technical stuff. I see. I, I thought you'd be happy to know that uh, it, it's working well. No, it, it really isn't. It's. I'm sorry. It, it may be for you. I don't know how. Uh, oh, you know, I got the faster internet. Now. No, that has nothing to do with it. <laughs> no. No, that has nothing to do with it. The the lag exists because the lag exists. It's you, the signal's going out to YouTube, and then YouTube is like playing around with it for a little bit and then spitting it out. Huh. Okay, and uh, yeah. Let me okay. see. Okay. Well, it, oh, well, wait a minute. Hold on a second. I, I will. I will give you. The, I will give you the finger. Yeah. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000, 7,000, 8,000, 9,000, 10,000, 10 seconds. <clears throat> so I, I don't know. I just saw the finger on oh, the YouTube. Oh, okay, so they, it, was ten, it was longer than 10 seconds for you. <coughs> ah. Well, seemed, seemed pretty good. Yeah, anyway. So, um... I suppose you have an excuse for our president, right? Uh, uh, the the guy who's falsely accusing him well, no, wait a minute. of you're, wait, giving you're, information you're, you're, to you're, you're, uh, you're, 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 some foreign you're faking, government. You're faking the news. He didn't, uh, no, he I think he, the he, anonymous he, guy wait, wait is faking the no, news. No, 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 no. He didn't. You're saying that you're assuming that he's falsifying the information. You're, you're yeah, spreading that. Sure. No, but there is no proof that he's falsifying it. There's no proof that he's telling the truth. We're still in the discovery phase. How about you're innocent until proven guilty? Uh, in the case of Donald Trump, fuck it. Uh, <laughs> let's hang him by the balls right now, although we'd have a hard time finding them, all right? Um, but uh, no, I mean, the fact is that uh, um, uh, it looks like he may have done something that endangered the country. Well, he's certainly doing a good job with Iran. What, what, what you do know, you, everybody wait, wait, was afraid that, what, he was going to get, wait, get wait, us wait, into wait, a wait, war. Don't, don't, don't change the subject. You're moving us off off topic. You know, you well, always just, that's what you do. You always answer. What is that? What is that noise? Ah. Uh, See, my lights just flashed again. Uh -huh. I have no uh, idea what what, uh, so what was that noise about. Anybody know? Oh. Huh. Getting raided by aliens. Oh Jesus, this is. I'm, and I'm waiting yeah. for the I'm waiting for the lights to go out. You know. But I just saw yeah. they even flashed on screen. I uh, you know I have no idea what's happening with the uh, with the electricity. Uh, there's, there should be nothing happening here. Because yeah. I don't have anything on that isn't normally on. Oh, here comes Tony. Let's see here. Uh, you gotta change your screen. Huh? You gotta what? change your screen now. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna do that, Phil. Hold on. Uh, let me see here. Uh, let me see. Tony Quisp. He'd be down at the bottom. He always comes in down at the bottom. Let me see here. Um, seven. Okay. Wait a minute. Where? Where is he? Come here. Tony. Oh boy, I, I just yeah. put, I just oh clicked boy. on him, and I just eh, now I'll click on him again. Let's see if it happens. Oh, there we go. There's Tony. Okay, there we go, folks. There's Tony. Okay, hi Tony. Good. How you doing? No, but anyway, I mean, what, uh, 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 Josh, you you've heard a little bit about this, haven't you? This whole kerfuffle with the president and the fact that he was perhaps doing some things on the phone with foreign leaders that might have put this country in jeopardy? 
Josh? Can Josh hear me? Josh is having issues with audio and visual with Skype. Hmm. Hmm. So Ray was right. No, no, his was different. He just couldn't find the mute button properly. See, when and you try Skype won't even quit on him. He's trying to quit Skype and it won't quit. Well, who? Who's trying to quit Skype? Josh, he's trying to quit it so he can restart. Mm -hmm. And he's messaging me that it won't. Uh... He can't even get it to restart. Now, here comes Ray Renati. Uh, let's see here if we got Ray again, and let's see if we have him in a decent, uh, a decent mode here. Let me see here. Let me uh, bring him in on. Uh, let's see here. Ray Renati would be yeah. Goomba sixty one. There yeah. we go. Goomba. Uh, and uh, then I have to turn that on, and then we go boom, and there he is. And you're in your hey. car. There you yeah, go. Yeah. So it's it's not me it's like i'm pressing the button and it's not doing anything so i mean i know how to use this stuff it's like i'm press the mute button and nothing happens josh is having a problem that way you having a problem josh <laughs> nod your head if you're gonna if you're having a problem or is he frozen he he can't hear you he can't anything. he's not frozen yeah, so it, he trying to fix whatever it is with Skype. Well, don't worry, Something. folks, because the lights are going to go out any minute here. So you it's know, it's Skype. It's Skype. It's just completely screwing up. Hmm. Yeah. Wow. I mean, I I know how to use it. Yeah. Okay. Some things don't change. Well, look, we only said we we're one person short of a full house, and uh, uh, now that we have so many people watch, nothing will happen. Has uh, Renee or any of them called in? No. Renee never calls in. Renee anymore. never calls in anymore. She hasn't called in for uh, three quarters of a year. Yeah, I, uh, I just the other day I decided to look. Uh, I found her address, not a phone number. Mm -hmm. uh, I was going to send her a card and uh, ask her if she's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so anyway, this is Josh Wheeler left. So maybe maybe he'll sign back in. Yeah, yeah, that's what he's doing. Yeah. So anyway, so I mean, um, um, uh, so anyway, we had that going on with the president. Uh, what else? You know what? You know what's getting me? This whole every time there's a death from somebody vaping, it's like it's a big vaping. headline on the news. We're now up to nine people who have died vaping. How many? Yeah, people? but over five hundred are injured, yeah, and yeah. many of them, and they're in the hospital. Okay, let me ask you this question: it's ridiculous. How many people in the country are vaping? Who cares? Let them smoke. Millions. Huh? Millions. Five hundred fifty. Millions. How so about if, all the people dying from yeah. cigarettes? So if five hundred people got sick, huh? there's a question to be asked. You know? Yeah, there's there's obviously something going on. Uh, I mean, you know, right now it's five hundred. Mm -hmm. No, but uh, I don't think there is. And, and, I don't think it's you know. I don't think it's necessarily the vape uh, pipes. Okay, what do you think? I think it's whatever they're putting in them, which yeah, in many most cases, cases which have been flavored vapes, and I think that uh, because they can inhale such a great amount without uh, feeling uh, uh, overwhelmed, I think that they're overwhelming their lungs. I don't think that that's the case at all. I think that they're it, it is whatever they whatever they're putting in the vape material, in other words, the stuff that's being used, the cartridges that are being used. A lot of these are being made in, you know, home labs China. and places like, no, not China, forget China. You think uh, it's laced? I, uh, yes, Patrick. Made right here in the good old state of Wisconsin. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Boy. oh is that where Jewel comes from? No, they did a major bust. Uh, they had uh, two brothers, uh, I believe 18 and 20, yeah. who were doing um, their own mythology uh, shit in oh. these vape cartridges. Okay. And they busted them and they had $350,000 cash on them at the airport. Oh, oh wow. Shit. To buy and then the, back home here in the state, in, uh, they were renting a condo 
they had empty vape cartridges mm. and they've been uh, packaging them and selling them. So it's been a big operation right out of here, not out of China. So. Yeah. Yes, Ray. Uh, yeah, I, I wanted to corroborate what Patrick just said there. I, I read that most of these uh, casualties are in areas where there's some legality problems and people buy it off the street or from people who are doing their own formulations, like Patrick said. But if you buy it from like reputable vape companies, it's I don't think it's been an issue. Well, they're going after the vape people like Juul, who is the biggest manufacturer of these things. And yeah. I don't know if they're responsible for anything. I don't because... think they are. I think it's the street stuff i you know i mean it could be i mean look i i use a vape for pot me too okay <laughs> uh and i have to say that i don't it, it kind of is rough on the lungs i but then it again is. i don't know if it's any rougher than pot was you know well i have to say that like if i smoke if i use a vape for marijuana i don't feel very good but if i if i smoke it regularly mm -hmm. it feels fine yeah. So it does do something weird to the to the plant. Yeah. That's yeah. not that great, I don't think. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, and I, I think they're going to figure it out eventually if there is an issue with it. I just think that going after the vaping industry itself is perhaps the wrong place to be going with this. The, yeah. the, the, yeah. the reason I think that there's too much vape in, in each drag is, you know, in the lungs there's something called cilia. And, and those, uh, those are these little hairs that tells the brain to, that you need oxygen and you need to yeah. take a breath. And if it's affecting uh, that, uh, you can hyperventilate. Uh, because even though you're getting air, you don't, you're not, you don't think you're getting air. And uh, uh, you could damage your lungs. So you there's a central nervous system. That's, 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 yeah. that's true. Yeah. That's true. Uh, yeah. well, by the way, uh, let me see here. I got it. I got. Oops, no, that's not what I want. Hold on a second. I need. Hey, to, Alex, oh, I we have a full thing. house. I, yeah, did, I yeah. called back because I just wanted to let you know it was my freaking Skype. Yeah, but I got to well, go to my son's birthday party, so I just wanted. Oh, just okay. Wanted well, to we're almost going to have a full yeah. house, but now we won't. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I got to go. I got to go to his birthday, and I don't want to do this while I'm driving because it might screw up again. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. okay. All right. Okay, fine. Right. Talk to you later. Right. Thanks for calling back. Bye, bye. Okay, let me see here. Let me uh, let me put uh, uh, Kevin on here. He'll take up uh, the space that was just taken up by let's see, Hog Rider. There he is. Okay, and uh, there we go. There we go. There's Hog Rider. Hello, Kevin. Hey, Alex. Hey, everybody. Do you have any? Uh, do you have any feelings about this vaping thing? Uh, not really. I just hear that everybody's dropping dead from it. You know, they sit, they make it. You know, they're making a big thing about it. Yeah, and they make it sound like everybody's dropping dead, but what's it been? Eight or nine people about dead, and, but nine over five hundred injured, and some of them are. Uh, they can't even tell you uh, what what they have. Yes, but you know something. None well, of this. None of this has kids. been. To it, this, none of this has been totally confirmed. It's not like people are able to sit here and say, "Oh, you know, this is what's wrong with it." You know, this is what's kind doing it. Uh, kind of like the guy that accused Trump. Oh, they're, they're how trying do, to why do you change the, the subject? Well, you said it's not totally confirmed. I told you that your story earlier was was hogwash. No, uh, no but you don't know. Th but you don't know that it's hogwash. That's yeah, but what you I'm don't saying. Know that it's true. That's either. why. But I'm just bringing it up. Uh, and, and you're. And you're trying to insinuate. By the way, your asshole, your, your asshole in Israel didn't do very well, did he? Uh, it's a 50-50, isn't it? So I think that the president of Israel gives uh, each one of them a chance to uh, two weeks to form a coalition, and so each one has their chance. What is now. this, Prime Minister Idol? <laughs> no, it's uh, no. There's also a president, and uh, it's a guy I never heard of, uh, but. Uh, He's the one that will decide, you know, uh, which one goes first uh, to try to uh, establish. Well, you know, a, uh, the thing is that Netanyahu doesn't want to lose this because then he's going to get put on trial. Yeah, yeah for taking cigars. Oh, is that yeah. it? Scotch and cigars. That's what they're accusing him of. Oh, I see. Okay. 
I'm sure it's that innocent. We they it often is. they often go to that much trouble to indict somebody for scotch and cigars. They, they wouldn't have done it if he was vaping. Oh boy. <laughs> anyway, uh, where were we? I, I'm just uh, worried the lights are going to go frozen? out. Kevin frozen. What? Kevin. Kevin, are you Hello? there? No, Hello? Kevin's not frozen. Oh. Kevin's oh, just okay. cool. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, oh, yeah. Um, 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 uh, 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 Brian. Yes. Yes. Uh, two things. One is uh, regarding uh, Mr. Netanyahu. Mm -hmm. It's not, uh, I don't know if it's a case of uh, Prime Minister Idol, as you eloquently put it there, Alex, so mm -hmm. much as it is a parliamentary style of uh, governance that I wish, I also wish we had in this country. And uh, secondly, uh, regarding the vape issue, all I have to say is selective outrage is fun, is it not? Especially when it can be capitalized upon our corporately owned media, perpetuated by uh, big tobacco and, uh, you know, monetized upon. You think big tobacco is behind a lot of this with the vaping? Oh, yeah, it's their, their, their competitor, aren't they? And well, they, they, they're uh, a more storied, uh, uh, established, uh, uh, and have been around the block a lot longer than the vaping industry has. Well, there is, there is, not. there is vape tobacco. Now the question is, are the major uh, tobacco companies involved in those vape cartridges? And also, those uh, vape pens. There, a lot of them, a lot of those deaths are from modified illegally or, uh, uh, you know, black market shit modified uh, 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 vaping pens that aren't what you buy from a store yeah yes so. phil uh do you think that the vaping industry is going uh after youth uh with the flavored vapes like bubble gum and you know the other i, I never had it but no more than you know, mcdonald's is no more yeah. than burger king is no yeah, more than the camel and no more than camel cigarettes has been but it's the parents responsibility and it's those who are you know if you were talking about minors it's those who are uh, majors the parents and the guardians responsibility to make sure that those uh, little bastards don't get them not my responsibility not to have access to them because i know quite a few grown ass men and women who don't mind smoking a bubblegum flavored uh vape pen some most of them are in their 20s but as far as i'm concerned as far last time i checked 18 and over you're still a grown ass adult are you not if you have hair on your nuts and on your snatch you are still an adult how how old do you there, have to be to buy parents, tobacco there are parents out there that let their kids smoke the shit because they they think it's better than cigarettes and they can smoke their little bubble gum shit that's all how old, that's how not old my do you concern have, yeah how old do you have to be to smoke tobacco is it 18 or no? 18, well, 18. 18 in California. Really? I heard they're trying to raise it to 21, though. With Yeah, yeah they're, they're trying to, Actually, it's all over the place, but they're supposed sponsored. to go to 21, yeah. Hmm. Mitch, no, Mitch McConnell. And in, here locally, they're trying to they're trying to ban it altogether, any kind of flavored tobacco at all, locally. Yeah, that won't create a black market. Just ask oh, uh, no. you know, Al Capone and... Oh, yeah, no love. shit. It'll raise up the price and everything else. Mm -hmm. They'll be putting their bets in and say, do me a favor, give me a pack of camels when you drop them off. <laughs> like, yeah. be like Jimmy Conway and Goodfellas. Well, 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 Jetson, I need a carton of cigarettes. All right. Well, they <laughs> ought to have uh, fentanyl-flavored uh, vape. Yeah, but you, know? you, but you know, the situation is with, um, uh, uh, what do you call it, with these uh, flavored things. Yeah. I don't. I don't like like the pot thing. I don't like the flavored pot. Uh, Is there flavored pot? Yeah. You know, these things have flavor to them. They're yeah, done by a major a company. Board. I mean, the people who make the vape pens also make the cartridges. So mm -hmm. it's, uh, and and it. Uh, but we said when the person who was supplying us with this stuff, can you just send them some non-flavored pot? And they don't have non-flavored. You know, with these cartridges, is it how long will it be until Hewlett Packard uh, starts making uh, cartridges <laughs> that are fake flavored? <laughs> oh shit! Nintendo started off as a trading card company, all right. playing cards. Sega started off making uh, joke books and shit and publications until they moved into the video. They both moved into the video game industry. So you know, just because if it's Hewlett Packard, it would not be unprecedented. It would be a little unusual, but certainly not unprecedented. Well, instead of putting uh, toner in it, they just put vape 
You know what? I, you know what? I don't get. Why really? the fuck not? But they it, should just legalize everything. Really, exactly. I mean, you could just Same legalize goes. the pod. Leg, you know, it's legal to sell the vape. I mean, you know what? I think you should just legalize everything. But, legalize you know, pot, legalize heroin, legalize pills. Just tax legalize the shit fuck, out of you know? it. At least the basic stuff. Well, and I you got, maybe make I, some I, money. I got to tell you something though. Like, at least it, it, it seems to me as though the the news people have gone ape shit over this story on the vaping, mm -hmm. and and it's like we're up to six people tonight. What? Six hey, people Alex, are dead. How many people vape? What? Can I? Can I? Ex and the guy's probably smoking a pack of cigarettes out. So he should be smoking while he's telling the story because it's the cigarettes are <laughs> just Listen, vape's dangerous, but hold on, let me light up again. But I mean, come on, it's so stupid. Like you're right, Alex. Why yeah, I think I think I, I, I think what would be good is if all these kids uh, would go back to smoking, you know. And nobody will say nothing. Yeah, yeah. Go back. Kids well, should kids should go back to smoking, and uh, forget about vaping. In fact, this, isn't this what they're trying to tell kids? Is go back to vaping? I mean, go back to cigarettes. If vaping's bad for you, oh look at that wallpaper! My God. If they, oh. Here's three things, Alex. One is, or well, two things. One is, uh, in answer to your question about these media people that go ape shit over, you know, vaping mm -hmm. and the controversy surrounding it, they're media whores. Those are my two words to describe them: media whores. And two. Um, um, well, I forgot what I was going to say. Well, you know what you know what gets me is the fact that the news people have a tendency to um, uh, to to overemphasize things that aren't news. Like you know, you've got a half hour of news at six thirty. It's a precious half hour in which every minute counts to give us some inf stuff we should know about. And all of a sudden, they're telling you a story about a plane. This was tonight, a plane that was diverted and dropped 30,000 feet within two minutes. 30,000, which is not a lot, oddly enough, but 30,000 feet in two minutes, and how the oxygen mass came down, everything, and then the plane landed safely on the tarmac. And you're going, okay, now if it crashed, then it's a story, but it didn't crash. So how is this a story that they're spending three minutes on in the middle of the half hour newscast? Have you heard in the news uh, today, Colt Industries, which makes the AR-15, has stopped manufacturing the Colt AR-15 long gun. They're only going to manufacture for military. Uh, you know, I haven't heard that much in the news, uh, you know, one or two mentions here and there. But uh, that's that's probably a big story. I think that's you know? a that's a fairly big story. I think that that yeah. certainly should have been there instead of the story about the plane that went down thirty thousand feet but landed safely on the tarmac. I mean, if there was a fiery blaze, I'd say okay, you know. Not that I'm wishing for that, mm -hmm. but I mean, I just I say to myself, you got a half hour here and you just wasted three minutes on a plane that didn't crash. Well, Alex, you would wish that to happen if that plane were populated by people you worked with in Miami, would you not? <laughs> well, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be crying. Oh, by See, the way, I pay attention. They're now they're now going after the guy who guys who own Phil's boat, the one that Phil went on. Oh yeah, what happened? yeah. Oh boy, you, you know his story. Uh, okay. Truth Aquatics uh, is the company that owned the uh, three. Uh, boats, the vision, the yeah. um, okay. Uh, so I, I just uh, put my mind went blank. Conception, and you know I've been on two of the three boats, and the Conception uh, three times over the last eight years for a total of ten nights. And you know those guys, they were they were very safety oriented. Well, according according to what they what the police have found, uh, mm -hmm. they were in so many different violations. It was ridiculous. Really? Yes. Really? Uh, now, uh, I think the biggest violation is that they're saying that the person that was supposed to be on watch was asleep. Oh, no, supposedly the biggest yeah. violation was there wasn't a fast and easy exit out of the bottom of that boat, and there were way too many people on there. And, yeah. um, you know, and, and of course, it probably did start, as you said, from batteries uh, yeah. that exploded. But they should have been able to, to get out of there, but they weren't able to. Well, if it, if they didn't get killed by smoke inhalation and the person who was on watch 
uh, saw that there was a, the beginnings of a fire, they could have gotten the fire extinguisher and put it out. Well, it could have, would have, should have. You know, have the, a the point is, uh, if you got some guy who's asleep, it's still your fucking boat. You're running the company that yeah, is not running it properly. Mm -hmm. And if he didn't fall asleep, they'd probably be alive. Probably. No. The they, one they paid for, he's sleeping on the job, this guy. No, they might all be dead anyway. Because getting out of there supposedly was because how are you gonna get out? You're very right. difficult. Well, Thirty-four people. I, I, whenever we rented the, well, chartered the boat, uh, we limited to fifteen. Fifteen. Uh, uh, yeah, but yeah, you know a, there was a more. Pretty packed boat if it's thirty-four yeah. people. From what I saw in the pictures, that's pretty uh, packed. We all had underwater camera equipment, and and some guys had movie making equipment, and we needed extra bunks just to store our stuff. Yeah. Uh, so uh, you know, if you didn't but, limit it, and it was all photographers. That but there's two doing. two hatches, right? One was an emergency hatch sure. in the front, and then one the regular place they go down, right? There, there's a set of stairs that yeah. go up and the, the stairs are narrow but they were wide enough for yeah. two people to pass uh, I, I think that uh, they were all dead before the fire hit them I, I believe that what they said was they died from smoke inhalation and uh, then they burned I would think because if those things were all lined up on a on a bed or on some piece of furniture or something and then they uh, caught they probably uh, smolder. No, they, they, there's uh, on the sides in the salon, there's uh, like benches that have a that have a cushion on it. And okay. we usually took our, uh, uh, there was several plugs, and I had a, um, what do they call those uh, strips that you, yeah, the plug strip. surge protectors. Yeah. Surge protector. So you'd plug into that, and then I had, okay. uh, you know, my stuff for charging batteries and charging all different kinds of batteries. Phone and, and then so. most likely that circuit was probably overloaded and it was just smoking wires that were burning. Uh, you know, I, I would tend to because think they that, said that inexpensive the, you know, the Chinese boats were older. Batteries. The boats well, were uh, older and they probably had older wiring and probably couldn't take that kind of a load. Well, uh, you know, we had a lot of batteries on those boats and yeah. charging, and uh, we didn't have a problem. Anyway, you know, I, I, you know who we haven't heard from tonight that much? Charlie, who is about ready to leave to go to uh, back to Texas. So. Uh, oh, yeah. You want to see that? I'm asleep. I'm so tired. Yeah. <laughs> you better bring a boat with you, Charlie. It's raining like hell down there. That's what I hear. Just in time for me to get there. Yeah, Houston is underwater again. Yeah. Oh, I think it was Walter that was telling me that part of the problem with uh, with, uh, uh, with with Houston is is that there there are no sewers. Oh. Is that correct for the water runoff to oh. go into? Yeah, you know who? Wait, was, wait, uh, hold on a second. I asked Charlie here. Oh. What? Charlie? Do you know? Well, I lived in Austin. I, I, that sounds familiar, but mm -hmm. I can't swear to it. Yeah. Yeah. What? Jack Bishop uh, yeah. was talking about that and what he said was is that they started building out in areas that shouldn't have been built on uh, as they continued to because expand the city, the city. Grew and that was and, that was below sea level right yeah, yeah. Not, I don't know yeah. below sea level but what was happening was the, the uh, water table couldn't drain uh, uh, well, Brian has his hand up Brian I just want to know one thing concerning Houston and this uh, uh, flooding issue that's once again pervading the uh, uh, current events. What's I wonder what humanitarian efforts Joel Olstein will lead this this year. <laughs> as he, two years ago. Is he still going to board up his church and eat his wife's sweet ass? As I read on the uh, meme once from yeah. before. Joel Osteen, who has this great mega church, you know, which is huge, uh, refused to take any people in from the storm when they had that big flood in uh, in Houston. And then when he got a lot of heat for it, he started taking some people in. But basically, he wouldn't let them into his mega church, and he could have he could have rescued a lot of people, you know. No, there was a stipulation: you need to have a check of five hundred dollars or more. Then you come on in. Yeah, dirty. Yeah. <laughs> yes, uh, Patrick. Yeah, but if, if he could have let those people in, they would have dirtied the floor. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, look what look what those guys did in uh, in uh, in New, New Orleans, Orleans, right? At the dome there, man, they turned it into a shithole they, because they had to get in out of the flood. <laughs> They, um, they were practicing moving to San Francisco. Yeah, but, but oh boy, what do you think they're gonna do? Steal the statue of Baby Jesus for Christ's sake? Let him in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, he's he's got to be a horrible person. By the way, my wife that. can't stand Joel Osteen. So oh, much so he, he the, looks like a horrible person. Well, on like Sunday, uh, uh, on and on you know what else? Well, One wait, more thing. I was gonna. I'd say, like to know. Anybody, if, if anybody in the gay community is listening to this in Houston, because if you found him, if you find him in a bathhouse somewhere, take a picture. I'm sure some of us would pay top dollar to see that. <laughs> Expose the motherfucker, because I wouldn't yeah. be one bit surprised. You want to hear the stupidest people? Talk. You want to hear about the stupidest people on the planet? Um, Sirius XM has a Joel Osteen channel. Uh -huh. Now, if I were running Sirius and Joel Osteen wanted to have a Joel Osteen channel, I'd say, how much are you going to pay us? Right? Uh -huh. uh, or, uh, uh, of course, we're not going to pay anything for it. If you want to do it, we'll give you the channel. That would be one of my two answers. They're paying, him a, mil they're paying him a million dollars a year for that channel to be on. Wow. Are you ready for that? A million so fucking a dollars Williams a year. Channel. What? A she a Marianne Williams. <laughs> that a million dollars. A million, million dollars. dollars buys a lot of sandbags. Yeah, it sure does. Yeah. Uh, you, know. you hear but, Marianne but, but, Williams on a hot mic? Who said? Uh, she's running the, the Democratic Marianne nomination. Williamson. Oh, oh, Williamson, uh, yeah. Uh, she was on a hot mic, uh, and it was at the uh, Fox Studios. Yeah. And she said that the people at Fox treated her a lot better than the Democrats. <laughs> so, so, well, they so treat you. They treat you I, I gotta tell you, they treat you very nicely over at Fox. I, Paris, I used there. to watch your show when you were on Tucker. I remember in the afternoon. No, he was not. It no, was that, was, that was MSNBC. Oh, were well, you on Fox? Who you on in the afternoon? Remember who was the show you were on in the afternoon? You used to have you on. That was, was that, uh, that was Tucker Carlson oh, when he was at MSNBC. Oh, sorry. He was good, I thought, talking with you. Yeah, I he liked was the nice. Show. He treated me fine. But the people over at Fox, every time I went to Fox, they treated you really well. They're a very professional outfit. You know? What did you do when you went to Fox? With, with, Just, you know, they brought function. me over there as a guest to make comments from the leftist point of view. Uh, and uh, I did it on a couple of occasions. Every time I went over there, I was treated very nicely. Did you I get was, to sit on the couch? Well, one time I was in the makeup like, chair. I was in the makeup chair, and this woman said, what show are you going to be on? And I said, this show, that show, whatever. And she says, oh, okay. Uh, where are you politically? I said, I'm to the left. She said, good luck. <laughs> how, did it, how did it work out? Yeah. But they treated you know, me was, very well. You know, yeah. what? Look. I miss Alan Combs because they used to do the spot like him. Remember, they used to beat up Alan on TV. He took it good, though, Alan. Alan Combs, too, like you did. Yeah. yeah. Did you ever get mad when you had a what, hold Whatever your happened to Alan? He, he died. died. Oh. I miss Alan. Yeah. But Alex, did you ever get mad if they pushed it that him? well? Well, he they used to beat him up, too, but he had a good sense of humor, it looked like. Yeah, well, he, he, it wasn't that he had a good sense of humor. Uh, Alan was really uh, well paid. And uh, he, he, you know, when he was suddenly, he was no longer on with Hannity anymore, they still kept, they put him on the radio channel. They held him, kept him on as a uh, uh, paid, you know, uh, uh, pundit uh, yeah, to do the various shows. They, did they were very good to him. They, when, they, they, when they stopped Hannity and Combs and made it Hannity, that's got to be the dumbest goddamn decision they ever made. Well, one of. For whatever reason they did it, they still treated Alan very well. You know, and Alan always said that, hey, uh, you know, he had a job that, believe it or not, he was there for almost 20 years, something like that, before he died. You know what else? I miss Crossfire. Oh, yeah. oh, talking about old shows, old yeah. political shows. Crossfire on CNN. Well, I old, old political out. shows, that goes back 20, that went off the air 20 years ago. Well, no, Crossfire went off the air like uh, shortly after 2004. No, oh. no, no, way before uh, that. That's, it that's had, the guy it that had would say bye-bye. All the gala, it had James Carville, and it had Robert Novak. Oh, no, the guy who said bye-bye, that was the, uh, that was the, what do you call it, report. Uh, the, uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, you know. Bye-bye. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to remember his name now. 
because I can't. I have a hard time remembering names. Oh. So. What the fuck? Yeah. But that was Crossfire with those four hosts that I remember when it because well, I, I know well, it's been on the air for well, a it long, was, long uh, time. But other at hosts. One, at one point, it was, Pat Buchanan it, used to be a host as well on there. It, well, one time uh, it was Pat Buchanan. Another time Tucker Carlson was on there and during his bow tie period. Yeah. Um, and uh, but you know, though they treat you fine over at Fox. You know, I can't complain about that. But anyway, um, oh, mm, delicious, <laughs> delicious. Um, so let's see, we talked about vaping. What else, what else is there? Some other, a couple other things in the news, and I'm trying to remember now. Have you seen this uh, Rudy Giuliani story from tonight? This no, interview? No, no, what? <laughs> tell, with, uh, tell, tell, us, tell us about it. <laughs> I, I didn't see it. i just been kind of reading a little bit about it. Apparently, he went on. CNN and acted even fucking crazier than he normally does. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, he, he gave it to uh, uh, Cuomo. Uh, he called him a few names. He called him fake. And, you know, he, he, he told Cuomo what he needed to be told from the right wing's perspective. Well, there's been... I mean, I've heard for a long time, and then I only found out about it because... This tweet from Elise Jordan, who's usually on MSNBC in the morning, and by the way, Elise Jordan is a is a pretty uh, pretty staunch Republican. I mean, she's been a Republican analyst and worked in two Republican White Houses for a long time. So mm. she just put this. The only reason I even started looking into it was because she put out something two hours ago that said, "If Rudy Giuliani's family truly loves him, they will get him help now, not tomorrow, now." And I mean, that's because I had heard for a while that. He starts drinking about, you know, 9 o'clock in the morning, and by the time he goes on TV at 9 o'clock at night, he is pretty fucked up. Who, who is this? And Julie. That, that Julie, is Ju why he acts. He's talking about Rudy. He's talking, Skeletor. You're talking about Rudy Giuliani? Yes. Yeah. Oh, so that if, if he has something he's doing on TV at that yes. time. It's there like there have been... Show. No one will really come out and say it, but they kind of dance around it on that morning show all the time that... He's an alcoholic. He's been an alcoholic for a long time. It's ruining his life. It's ruining the lives of his family, and no one can seem to get him to stop, and it's only a matter of time before he, you know, gets himself in a fucking real train wreck that he can't get out of. In other words, he kills somebody. So, I mean, I, I don't know if it's true. I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah but, you know, I don't understand. That doesn't still doesn't excuse his, his, uh, his actions well, because I know a lot of assholes are alcoholics, uh, non-assholes who are alcoholics. Yeah. I know some very it, nice it alcoholics. both sides. Uh, it was Cuomo going after him, Giuliani going after Cuomo. Neither one of them wanted to back down. And they, they it was a 28-minute uh, exchange. Wow. Yeah, I mean, I haven't seen it. I just happened to see her tweet and was like, wow, he must have done something well, even uh, more out of the ordinary. He, here's, he here, here, here's what I know about Cuomo is that I, and excuse me, Giuliani, is that I was watching an old episode of Seinfeld the other night, and it was the episode, the yogurt episode. You remember the yogurt episode? Yes. Where they ate the ec episode, and what happened was they filmed it, you know, when Giuliani was running against Dinkins, and they actually filmed two endings, one with Dinkins and one with Giuliani, and Giuliani was on that show, uh, and a much younger Giuliani, not uh, full head of hair, actually, at that yeah. point. Isn't that the yogurt that was supposed to not make them gain weight? That's yeah. right. That's right. And, and, and they gained weight. Yeah. But I, I thought I read a few days ago about, um, this is maybe three or four days ago, the headline, and I don't really, I just see these headlines, but I don't read these stories because it really doesn't matter. It's not my business, but I think he's getting divorced again. Is that correct? Like, the, this is like his third or his fourth divorce or whatever, and I'm not, I mean, so it must probably have something to do with, didn't he lose his prostate? Yeah. No. Who, Rudy? No. Oh, he had prostate cancer. Yeah, and they did the seeds. Oh, okay. And I guess it went straight to his brain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I just I just saw her tweet. She's a little comical sometimes because, you know, it's just like, like yesterday she put a thing out when everyone was going on and on about, you know, this Corey Lewandowski testimony and all this she just put a thing out wanting to remind everybody you know cnn is the network that gave this guy a fucking job by the way <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know i mean which which is true 
So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I just He must have acted even more ridiculous than he does on a normal basis, which is saying something. Yes. Phil? Uh, there was a company in China that had to put nets out in front of their, uh, 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 on their business to keep people from committing suicide. Mm -hmm. Today, somebody jumped from the Facebook headquarters. An employee uh, committed suicide by jumping off the building. Where was this at? How many? Uh, how Facebook many, is in yeah. Sunnyvale. How many likes did he get? Mountain View. Uh, I mean, yeah, how many views? <laughs> yeah, how many likes? Yeah. Fa he Facebook. Get? Facebook worker dies after jumping from headquarters building. Mm. Mm. So oh, I, I guess maybe uh, there is uh, difficult there is uh, whatever that Chinese company was well, called. I'm, I know Alex. I'm going online about that and giving it that. Right. Yeah. Well, big tech. Yeah. And, you know, you want to talk about a broader subject on, on that matter, you know. Let Brian problem. talk here. What, Brian? You know, extrapolating on that uh, anecdotal piece of information that Phil shared with us, uh, the uh, influence, the negative influence, of course, that uh, big tech has had on us for the last 15, especially for the last 15 years. And uh, it seems to be a growing bipartisan effort among Republicans and or Democrats and Republicans mm -hmm. to uh, break these uh, firms up, as they should. One one of two things that I, I wholeheartedly, uh, as far as rhetoric goes, throw my support behind Trump on. This and, uh, you know, his crusades against uh, Amazon and, 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 and the like, as well as, uh, you know, his stance on China. Mm -hmm. The Chinese trade and uh, international trade as well. Mm -hmm. You know, it's uh, NAFTA. We need to preserve NAFTA. I know the only reason why we need to preserve NAFTA is because fucking hedge fund managers who haven't picked a shovel up in their goddamn lives is telling us that, uh, you know, for their livelihood, so they can afford their blowjobs and their hookers and their fucking yachts, that uh, we, uh, we we need to support their fucking lifestyle at our expense. Fuck you. <laughs> I was just getting licked my asshole, not necessarily in that order. Oh, boy. Holy moly. America first, and not the racist America first. I mean, America first as in the melting pot. Everybody, you know, Alabama and Pittsburgh and or Pennsylvania should compete with New York and Alabama. It shouldn't be uh, Pennsylvania and New York competing with uh, Beijing and fucking uh, Vietnam. Yeah. Okay. Did you see that uh, Amazon is holding job fairs? Oh really? There might be one near you, uh, uh, Brian. Who knows? Yeah, I've worked for Amazon. I don't care to anymore. Uh, no, they have uh, they have thirty thousand jobs available. Yeah, and I wonder how many of them are expendable like that. Well, I mean, uh, uh, I've heard horror stories about people on the line there boxing Believe packages. Them. You know, and they're true. required That's, to do those so. Stories many, are true. Believe them. They're required to do so many an hour, and if they don't get that done. They're out. If any organization needs a collective bargaining and a union, it's that. Yeah, absolutely. If any company needs a, a union, it's Amazon. There's no Basically, question that about trick. it. I can't. Don't get me started on that bald-headed motherfucker. You know, and right behind him, I mean, I mean, I don't know. See, I, if Facebook doesn't have the same kind of business, they don't have something where they got to get people on an assembly line uh, boxing packages and sending them out. No, but they are manufacturing their own fake fiat currency so no but but what they're doing with, with facebook is a really a software based company where uh, where uh, amazon is a physical hands-on comedy you've got a uh, comedy uh, company you've got to box things you got to get people to box things so on and so forth that kind of crap you know huh? so uh, uh, they use robots hmm you know what I see a lot of in Queens now, Alex? I see a lot of the Amazon trucks, like the vans, delivering. They, they're trucks. now delivering themselves, yeah. Yeah, I'm yeah. seeing them a lot now. When I'm walking my mother around, and I'm seeing a lot of them in my area. I ordered something so, today, and then I had to reorder it, uh, unorder it, and then reorder it because I put it on the wrong card. But when I first ordered it, and it's a graphics card, they said, uh, do you want delivery today? For so free, and so I said, "Yeah," and they were going to deliver it today for free. But then Are I went back. I reordered it. I reordered it, and they it, it gave me a choice of uh, tomorrow or the next day. So I took tomorrow. But they can get it to you. I this this thing this uh, this new uh, Alexa I got. Uh, I bought yesterday at about five in the afternoon and got today at noon. Hmm. 
Are you still I mean, messing around with that graphics card in the uh, Mac Pro? I'm getting a new graphics card that supposedly does work, is supposed to work in that Mac Pro. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And if it doesn't work, I'll just eat it this time, you know. Well, they, they, I thought it was expensive. It was like 300 bucks. No. Do you mean that literally, Alex? You'll eat it? You'll eat I'll, it? I'll eat it. No, it's like two, two, like two, two hundred, two hundred, bite out of 200 bucks. 200. Yeah. Yeah. You'll probably send it back. No, I've already sent back too many of them to them. I don't want to do it again. This time I'm going to work on trying to get the thing to work. I think there are ways yeah. of doing it. I think there may be a cord that's not working right or, you know, something like that. So, you know, who knows? Who knows what the story is? Uh, but uh, anyway, um, uh, uh, Jeff, when are you going on vacation? I'm, I'm leaving uh, next week, and, I, and I'm going to be there for two weeks. Mm -hmm. Where? Can you call us from there? I don't know. The time zone is going to be crazy. Where are Where are you going to be? Plus, uh, I'm I'm going to be in um, in um, uh, places like let's see, I got a little, little my little list there. Yeah. I'm going to be in Prague. Oh, okay. And uh, Vienna. Mm -hmm. And uh, Budapest. Mm -hmm. And uh, on a little boat. They make a lot of good porn in Budapest. Mm -hmm. I didn't know. Well, huh? I didn't bring the right clothes for that. <laughs> You don't, you don't have, need any clothes. You don't have to that. bring clothes for that. <laughs> That's the point. Uh, but you might need lube. <laughs> well, I, <laughs> and protection. Well, let's see. There's a what? It's about an eight-hour difference, something like that. Maybe eight yeah, hours. I, yeah, I think it is. Yeah. Well, you know, if you get up at seven in the morning or something, you can always call us or eight in the morning. Yeah, fine. You give us a little call and say, "Here I am in Prague," and you don't have to stick around. You just say, "Hey, here I am in Prague." You know, I were they start. having, were they having a heat wave there earlier in the uh, in the summer? It's kind of nice and warm. Uh, yeah. Looking at the numbers, and right now, I think it might be seventy eight degrees. Really? That's Celsius. That's good weather. <laughs> no, not regular. <laughs> not a Celsius guy these days. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Uh, that would be nice. Yeah. So we won't see you for a couple of weeks. Ah. That's right. That's yeah, well, I'll be sitting here with like two people, and Charlie's going to be gone for a day or two, and yeah, on the road. So be, on, be on the road. Yeah. He's Isn't, worth three people. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't David Hajek uh, living that? Uh, no, he doesn't live in Prague. Who knows where he, he is in anymore? Czechoslovakia. Who knows where he is anymore? So anyway, yeah. uh, uh, but uh, it, we we I, I have tried to tr find Renee too. And I, I can't. I she, she isn't even on I Facebook. Found, I found her address. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's a way you can search it, and uh, so I'm just going to drop a postcard. I don't know whatever email. happened to her. You know, we certainly uh, didn't upset her, but but just like she disappeared from Facebook, she disappeared from everywhere. Yeah. Maybe the volcano yeah. got her. Husband died. We've well, been a quiet long time ago. Patrick's been quiet tonight. That's when she started disappearing. Patrick, you've been quiet tonight. Uh, I haven't had much to contribute. Oh, oh okay, because you don't vape. No, I don't vape. The only story that had any interest to me was uh, the Colt manufacturing uh, with up to billion weapons, which is it prompting me to accelerate my uh, ambition to purchase an AR-15 now. Oh, okay. Yeah, you with a gun. That that's a good idea. Rambo uh, in a wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> stock. It, it, it's an air stock, so it it would be fine. And, Gee, and he came in here. He was in a wheelchair. He looked in a disabled, and then he pulled out the gun and killed everybody in the store. I don't understand it. <laughs> That motherfucker By the right way, you may notice he's not denying that portrayal I just did of him. So, you know, <laughs> we, we're, we can be the people who say, well, he was such a nice guy. 
People anyway, say I'm so psychotic. Anyway, the theme's running, and uh, I'm running out of uh, out of time. Thank you so much to uh, Phil Meyer for being with us this evening. Uh, thank you, Brian. Good to see you again. Gosh, it's been a while. I we missed your terse behavior. Uh, Charlie, good to see you. Good to see you, uh, uh, Josh. Uh, and um, sorry you had some trouble with your. Uh, are you still, still there or is he frozen? Oh, yeah, he's there. Okay. Jeff, thank you. Patrick, thank you. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Alex. And uh, why, why don't you all give a big uh, wave goodbye to everybody and I'll wave back at you. Okay, there they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizens panel for tonight. Uh, let, me, uh, let me hang up on them here. It's pretty easy for me to do. But I, ha I, I can't do it and, and talk to you at the same time. I'm, because I have to get it all ready for Jack, who is next over most of this same cabinet. Uh, and he'll be here uh, next with the intersection. And then tomorrow night at 9.30, hopefully tomorrow night it'll be Damien. And then I'll be back again. Uh, let's see here. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll be back here again tomorrow night at uh, 10 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, Tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody.